this video, we will discuss about the problem, help Isan. Isan has been given a task by his teacher. He needs to find the nth term of a series. The thing is that his teacher gives him some example to help him out. Okay. The thing is, the problem is asking you that the nth term of a series is the difference of n and the closest prime number to n. So basically, you have to you are dealing with the number n and you have to find the closest prime number to that particular number. That prime number can be less than n or can be greater than n, but it should be a prime. And then you have to output the difference between that number and its closest prime number. Let's take an example. Let's take that our value of n is. If you will just search for the nearest prime number to this 14, you can see that the nearest prime number less than 14 is 13 and greater than this 14 is 17. These both are the prime numbers, which is just less than 14 and just greater than 14. But the nearest prime is 13 and you, you don't have to output the nearest prime. You have to output the difference between the number and its nearest prime number. So the answer will be 1. Similarly, let's say that we are just that the, the problem given to us is 25. For 25, uh, its nearest prime less than it is 23 and greater is 29. These are the two prime numbers. So you will take this 23 and 25 because the difference is 2 only. You will output 2. 2 will be the answer. So, if you will just focus on the constants of this problem and the expected time complexity and space complexity of this problem, you can see one thing. You can see here that it is written that the value of n can range up to 10 to the power 5 and also it is written that the expected time complexity is n into square root of n and accepted expected space complexity is constant. So, in this case, what we can do that we have to just first iterate for the numbers which are less than 14 or for the number which are less than n and then find for our prime number and numbers which are greater than n and find for our prime number. So for that, that whether a number is prime or not, we can take the C algorithm. We can make use of C algorithm. But the problem is that the C algorithm will use an array of some uh, till I think uh, so till 10 to the power 5 or something to the power 5 plus 500 it should be uh, something more than that okay so uh, the space complexity for that will be something it will take some extra space maybe some o of n space will be taken if we will use c but here as it is given to us that we have to use the constant space we will not store for every number we will find that whether that number is a prime or not and because there is one more thing that as we know that the maximum answer for this can be n because we all know that 2 is a prime number. We all know 2 is a prime number. So whatever is the answer, maybe there is no prime number between 2 and n, then also the answer n minus 2 is always a possible answer. n minus 2 is always a possible answer. But we have to search for a more minimum answer. So means our answer can should cannot ex exceed the n minus 2. It will always be less than or equal to n minus 2. That is the truth. Okay. It will always be less than or equal to n minus 2. So for this case, what we will do, we will just take, we will first take a number n, we will go with the values which are less than n and check for a prime number, the first prime number which is getting and similarly for the values which are greater than n and then we will check for a prime number. And when we will get both the prime numbers for the less than and for, for the greater than, we will take the prime number which is nearest to it. So let's see that what we can do. First of all, what we will do, we will create a Boolean function which can be written, which can be said that is prime. Here we will get a value in x and we will check it whether this value x is a prime or not. If this value is less than equal to or less than 2, so we will automatically return false because the numbers 0 and 1 are neither prime nor composite. Now what we will do, we will for the other case what we will do to, to find a prime number that whether the number is prime or not, we will use the school method. That is just we will iterate from a loop from 2 to sqrt of n. So here you can see that I am just iterating from 2 to square root of n. Because here is where the unique factors of that number will lie. Okay. And to find that whether it is sqrt n, instead of doing sqrt of n, I am making i square less than equal to n. These both are the same cases and this is a preferable case which we can take. Now we will just see that if 
So here it should be x because x is the number which we are taking. So if x mod i is equal equal to 0, that means we have a factor, it is not a prime number, we will return false, otherwise we will just return true. Similarly, what we will do here that we will take here two variables, let's say x is equal to n and we will take y is equal to n. What we will do that we will take a while loop, okay, which will be true. And where what we will do, we will just check that if is prime y. So if y is prime, so we will just break the loop, not return, we will just break the loop. Else we will do y plus plus. So in this way, what we will do, we will get we will get the number which is greater than n and which is a prime. Similarly, for x, we will do the same thing. We will do the exactly the same thing. Here we will write x and here, here we will write x minus minus because in x, we are write, we are storing number less than n. So we can write prime less than n. And here we can write prime greater than and this is what we are doing now what we will do is that here there will be also one more condition that the value of x should also be greater than one okay now what we will do is that we will just write here one more thing that we will take the difference of this from this y and n and x and n so if because we have to output the minimum one else we will return the value of y minus n and for our just safe case it returns zero at the last now let's compile this case you can see the problem is compiled successfully let's submit it so we are getting a wrong answer in a particular test case okay so the for the input value of one we are getting a wrong answer let's see that what is the case so for one okay so th there is a problem that when the value so this is a corner case that we have to handle and that is very important to handle also so the thing is that if we can just write a corner case and at the start only we can write here and if we can also check the constant so constants from one only one will be the only corner case i think we will write this if n is equal equal to one in that case return one because the nearest prime will be two okay? the nearest prime will be two now let's submit it you can see all the test cases are passed all the test cases for this problem are passed now if we talk about the space complexity and time complexity for this problem you can see that we have not used any extra space so the space complexity of this problem the space complexity for this problem is just o of one and if we talk about it is o of one and if we talk about the time complexity so time complexity for this problem is o of n into square root of n this is square root of n is for find for that is prime number and that is prime number is being called in the worst case for at max for n or let's say 2 into n times so the overall time complexity will be n into o of n because you can see that we are just, uh, calling this is prime function and that will be just till and times this is what we are doing here i hope you have got this particular problem if you have any doubt you can comment it down like this video comment share it with your friends thank you